Hey everyone, Percy here. Welcome to Super C. So today, um, yeah, we're gonna have to talk about Ozone. So Ozone 10 has been released this week, probably one of the most highly anticipated releases of this year. So we have to talk about it. Now first let me say that there will be a link in the description. It is going to be an affiliate link, which means that should you be interested, you can use that link at no extra cost to you. It will take you to Plugin Boutique where you can check it out. Potentially I would get a little commission, which of course would help support this channel. Now one more thing before we get started. When I talk about Ozone in this video, I'm primarily referring to Ozone Advanced. So Ozone Elements and also Ozone Standard will not have all of the features that I will talk about in this video. So go to the website of Isotope, you will find a versions comparison list over there. Okay, let's talk about Ozone. So what is Ozone? Now for those of you that don't know, now Ozone is basically a mastering suite. It comes with a bunch of different modules you can use. So we have EQs, compressors, limiter, exciter, you name it, it's all there. Uh, you can use these modules independently, uh, so separately in your effects chain, or you can use it as one suite. Um, it also comes packed with artificial intelligence and the purpose of course is to make it as easy as possible to master music with. Okay, now let me mention all of the modules that Ozone 10 comes with and I will save the new stuff for last, so stay tuned. Now first of all we have four vintage modules. Now these vintage modules of course can be used to add some vintageness to your sound. Now first of all we have the Vintage EQ. Now the Vintage EQ kind of tries to model the uh, Pultec hardware EQs. We also have a Vintage Compressor, uh, single band compressor also tries to emulate some vintage uh, hardware compressors. We have vintage tape, which of course is tape saturation. And finally, we also have the vintage limiter. And that also emulates the Fairchild 670 hardware limiter. Okay, now let's move on to the, um, let's say a bit more regular equalizer. So the equalizer in Ozone 10, I have to say, it's very similar to the equalizer in Ozone 9. Um, eight bands equalizer, very versatile. So for example, we have several digital and analog filter shapes to choose from, mid-side processing, there's a bit more there. So it's a very versatile equalizer. Now we also have a dynamic EQ also an 8-band EQ. Now, as many of you know, a dynamic EQ is kind of a mixture of EQ and compression, which is a very vital tool for mastering, some would say. Now, and then we have the Dynamics module, which is a multi-band module, up to four bands. Now, the Dynamics module is kind of a limiter and a compressor in one module. Uh, with each of the bands, we can separately limit, compress, or expand. We can also automate release times. We can automatically set crossover frequencies. We have mid-side processing mode, you know, so it's also a very versatile, very useful module. Now, next we have the exciter. Now, of course, the purpose of an exciter is to add some character to the sound. It's exactly what this does. By the way, it's also a multi-band module. Now, next we have the spectral shaper. Now, the spectral shaper is there to get rid of some harshness in the mix. I kind of want to compare it to a de in some ways. It's kind of the same basic principle, so very similar technique. Now next up we have the master rebalance module. Now with that we can adjust the volume of the drums or the bass or the vocals in any audio track and that is even if that audio track has already been bounced out. So that's a very interesting tool to have. And then we have the low end focus and with that we can add some punch or smoothen out the low end. So it specifically targets the low end to make some adjustments. Okay, now let's move on to the new stuff. I know that's what you've been waiting for. So let's start with the maximizer. Now the maximizer in and of itself is not new. The maximizer, by the way, is the master limiter. Not new, but there is a new feature in the maximizer, and that is called the magnify soft clip. Now, with that, we can boost the loudness without losing the original sound quality. And there are some options we can choose from in terms of the saturation it produces. So, you can choose between light, moderate, and heavy. With light, the saturation begins at 3 dB below the threshold. With moderate, it begins at 9 dB below. And with heavy, it begins at 30 dB below the threshold. 
Okay, now let's talk about the Imager module. Now, the Imager module allows us to add or reduce the width of a certain instrument or a certain frequency range, rather. Also, a multi-band module up to four different bands. Now, the Imager module is not new, but what is new in the Imager module is a new feature called Recover Sides. Now, this might well be my personal favorite new feature in Ozone 10. Now, with Recover Sides, you can reduce the width without losing the sides. That's how they explain it. It basically means that it maintains the stereo information um, but it kind of converts it into mono. I'm probably not explaining it very well, but I think that most of you know what I mean. So sometimes you just need to reduce the width of a certain frequency range. But with this feature, you know, it's, it's becoming a bit more mono, but you will still perceive kind of the same depth. Now that to me is very, very interesting. Okay, moving on to the stabilizer. Now the stabilizer is a new module. It is a dynamic EQ also, but this one will automatically try to add some clarity to your mix. It will try to remove some unwanted harshness and it will try to calm down some unwanted resonances. Now, you will have to um, select a tonal balance, which it will use as a target, and accordingly it will apply its processing. So it's a very, very advanced dynamic EQ. Now, another new module is the impact module. Now, the impact module is, as they call it, a microdynamics processor, also a multi-band module with up to four different bands again. Now, positive values will result in expansion, which will give you a much more open and punchy sound. Negative values will result in compression, which will give you a much more dense and glued sound. So potentially a very, very useful new module. So those are all the modules, but maybe the biggest feature of Ozone, to some, maybe to others not, but the biggest feature arguably is the Master Assistant. Now, the Master Assistant got a little bit of an overhaul, and how it works is this. So first you need to activate it, then you need to play your music, preferably the loudest part of your song, and then it will analyze your song and within eight seconds it will basically try to master your song for you. And it may be all you need, who knows? Of course, you can still make adjustments afterwards. Um, and what they're also suggesting at Isotope is that you can also use it as a virtual second set of ears, because of course you can uh, compare the result to your own master that you potentially you've made manually. And then you have something to reference it to. Now, this is what it looks like. Now, to the left here, you can see the target library. You can see a list of different genres. Now, each of these targets is the result of analysis of multiple chart-topping hits, as they call it, in that genre. Now, the master assistant will automatically try to identify which target suits your song best. Of course, that can be changed afterwards. And then it will try to match the tone, the width, microdynamics and loudness of your song to that of the target. Um, and as I mentioned, of course, you can still make any uh, adjustments you want afterwards, and you can do so right from within the master system itself. But if you want to dive into a little bit more details or a lot more details, you can just switch back to the modules view. Now, one last thing I'll mention about the Master Assistant is that you can also create your own reference targets by just importing an audio file from your computer. Okay? All in all, very advanced stuff. So that's an overview of Ozone 10 by Isotope. So now in conclusion, what do I think of Ozone 10? Now, let me start with the artificial intelligence. Now, as I mentioned before, in general, artificial intelligence is getting better and better and more advanced all the time. The same is true for artificial intelligence in music. And Isotope is absolutely, definitely one of the front runners in that regard. I'm very impressed with what they've done so far. Very impressed with what Ozone is suggesting. So very advanced stuff. But what I also very much like about the artificial intelligence in Ozone, ironically, is that it never really gets in the way. 
Now, many people don't really need artificial intelligence. Some people don't like artificial intelligence. Some people don't want anything to do with artificial intelligence. But even for those people, Ozon is still a very, very, very capable mastering suite because it comes with a bunch of tools specifically for mastering uh, with a lot of versatility. It's very user friendly and it brings a lot of quality. It's kind of best of both worlds. I mean, some smart plugins come with some really sophisticated artificial intelligence, but if you don't want to use the AI, sometimes what you're left with is just a mediocre plugin. Now, that's not the case with Ozon. So, Ozon is a really great mastering suite and it also comes with some very advanced artificial intelligence. So you can be as hands-on as you like. You can master an entire song 100% manually, or you can let Ozon do all the work and then make some adjustments afterwards. You know, so best of both worlds. Now at this point, we're left with only two questions. So first of all, is it worth it? And second of all, if you already own a previous version of Ozon, like Ozon 9, for example, is it worth upgrading to Ozon 10? Now, these are always the most difficult questions to answer, of course, because of course, that all depends on you, your preferences, your budget, etc. So let me say this. So theoretically, it is possible to master an entire song only using the stock plugins of your DAW. So if you ask me, is it absolutely necessary to have Ozon 10? Ultimately, of course, my answer is going to be no. But probably it will make your life so much easier. And that's probably going to be especially true if you're not a seasoned, very experienced mastering engineer. Like myself. I mean, mastering has never really been my main focus point. So Ozon has really been a good solution for me to get into mastering a bit more. I really learned a lot and I'm still learning a lot. And Ozon has played a big role in that. So for me personally, it's definitely been worth it. Now, if you already own Ozon 9, for example, is it worth upgrading to Ozon 10? Now, that's an even more difficult question to answer um, because, of course, Ozone 9 is still capable of helping you master your song for you. On the other hand, Ozone 10 comes with some very interesting new features. Let me say this, I think I said the same thing when I upgraded to Neutron 4 from Neutron 3, and that is, I was simply too tempted to not upgrade. I paid for it with my own money and I upgraded. To be fair, I'm kind of a plugin junkie, but still. So Ozon 9, still capable of helping you master your song. Ozon 10 comes with some very interesting new features. So that's the decision you need to make. Good luck with that. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. So go check out Ozon 10 for yourself if you like. And if you do, let me know what you think about it. And if you think it is worth upgrading, okay? Thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.